The wedding vase has been part of Pueblo culture for centuries. The two spouts represent the separate lives of the bride and the groom and are united by a bridge going across the top. The supplies you're going to need for the first part of the project, making the body of the pot, are going to be a clay mallet, a slump mold, or just a regular bowl, and of course we're going to need some saran wrap to prevent our project from sticking to our mold or our bowl. The first thing you're going to do after you wrap your bowl or slump mold with saran wrap is to create a small pinch pot place it over the top of your mold. Um, if you need to add some foil, that's fine too. And then you're just gonna gently start tapping with your plate mallet from the top down. You're always gonna be working from the inside out. Once your clay is leather hard, you can go ahead and remove it from your mold and start adding more coils with it right side up. You want to build it up until it's about halfway as tall as you want your base to be. Next you're going to repeat the process when creating the top half of the body of your base. Once both halves are leather hard you are going to make sure you score and slip when you join them and add a coil around the middle section to fill in any gaps. Now it's time to just keep smoothing away using either a rubber spatula or a polishing stone. Once you are happy with how smooth it is, you are going to go ahead and cut two holes in the top where you're going to attach your spout. For the next part of the project, which is creating the spout, you are going to need a rolling pin, a type of cylinder that is tapered on the ends, and also your clay knife. The first step in creating your spouts is to roll out a slab of clay. The next step is to form the spout using the tapered end of your clay rolling pin. We want to use the tapered end because the spouts are smaller towards the body of the jug and they open up wider towards the top. Compare both of them while you are working to make sure they are the same shape and size. Now we're ready to start attaching our spout. Make sure you score and slip, and also put a coil around just like we did before to cover any gaps. And just a quick note, I'm using an Aardvark B3 brown clay, but you can choose whatever clay body you prefer to work with. You may need to use some extra clay or lean your spouts up against something to make sure that they stay in place and don't fall too far towards the outside. To create the handle or the bridge that goes between the two spouts, you're just going to roll a pretty thick coil and then use a rolling pin to flatten it out. supplies that you're going to need uh, when you start to create the designs on your wedding base are a variety of different carving tools for your clay. Uh, mostly though you'll probably end up using a lot of your needle tool and some of those wooden tools that come to a point on the end. Um, and it's also really important that you have a pretty full soft paintbrush to use to dust away all the little bits and pieces of clay that are going to uh, accumulate when you start to carve into the clay. It's really wise to use a turntable here because that way you don't have to keep picking up your pottery off of the table and turning it from to side to side while you're working. Especially if you're making bands that go all the way around the pots, it's really nice to have it a smooth, solid band while you just turn it and keep your knife still. Carving in the intricate designs can be a tedious process of just scraping out the little bits of clay, dusting it off, 
scraping out the bits of clay, dusting it off, but it's always going to be worth it in the long run. As you can see, I'm all done and ready for the kiln. Stay tuned for part two when I talk about glazing. Thanks for watching, guys.